السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا افتح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين Today inshallah we will continue uh, with part two of the principles of the religion which focus uh, on fixing the heart and when when the heart is fixed then uh, we are getting uh, we uh, it is purified from all blameworthy characteristics that uh, uh, hinders this heart from becoming a sound heart. So when we purify the heart from these characteristics, it gets ready to receive the light, to receive the nur of guidance. And subhanAllah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks into our hearts and found it, uh, and finds it uh, so, uh, a so, sound heart, then he will be pleased with us on the day of judgment. So today, the 10th blameworthy characteristic that we will stop by is ostentation and show. Which is translated to Arabic as "riya." So, what is what is ostentation? Ostentation is doing good deeds or um, doing uh, acts of worship, but without being these these uh, acts of actions the intention for them is not sincere it's not for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather um the intention is more for pride for being uh, uh, blessed by surrounding people so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dispraises those who, uh, who are characterized by ostentation in worship. So they're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but not for her sake. So it is, ostentation is actually the opposite of sincerity and um, we all know that without sincerity all our actions are worthless and subhanallah uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us and he mentions in one of the narrations that inna akhwafa ma akhafu alaykum so the the thing which I fear upon you the most is a minor shirk. The minor shirk. So the Sahaba inquired, "What is what is that, Ya Rasulullah?" So. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on the days on the day of judgment uh, when when uh, when he when he's recompensing people his servants for for their actions so if if he sees that the intention was not for him the the there is no sincerity in the actions but there were they they the people were doing something for the sake of others. So Allah will say on the day of judgment, So go to the to, to those who uh, whom you, you used to show off your acts of worship. 
So see if you will find any recompense from them, if they will give you any deeds, if 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 they will do uh, if they will do you any good. So ostentation is is a sign of poor manners with with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So adab مع Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And from, from, from this perspective, it is the most dangerous spiritual illness that can afflict the heart of a believer. So, what, why? How, how is this mentioned? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاؤُونَ So woe to those who pray, but they are heedless of their prayer. And they are not doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are just doing it for the sake of people. They are not sincere in their actions. They have su'ul adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, so, such a person regards himself as perfect and accomplished. He wants everyone to see that he is a successful person, that he is a generous man, that he uh, performed hajj, that he helps people, that he is praying, that he is worshipping Allah. But he has not thought for a second what happens to the reward of his of his deeds when he, when he does them so that with, with he has the intention that he is recognized what what is he thinking he he's not thinking of the akhir he's not thinking of the reward of his deeds in the Akhirah. So, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talked about ostentation. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, mentioned how destructive this quality of the heart is. So he, he warned us. He said, يُقَالُ لِلْغَازِي وَالْعَالِمِ وَالْمُنْفِقِ إِذَا قَالْ فَعَلْتُ كَذَا وَكَذَا كَذَبْتْ أَرَدْتَ أَنْ يُقَالَ فُلَانٌ عَالِمْ أَوْ شُجَاعْ أَوْ جَوَاد فَيُذْهَبَ بِهِ إِلَى النَّارِ so this is uh, the narration by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that on the day of judgment, a warrior, a scholar, or a generous donor, a generous person will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when, when they both talk about the good works and the good deeds uh, that this person has engaged in, uh, he will be informed. He will. He would say, "Ya Allah, I did this. I did that. I did. Uh, I uh, I did this." But he's Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will say, "You lie. You wanted that people say that this is a great warrior. This is a great scholar, or this is a a generous person. And you had attained these praises in the world." In, in uh, while you were living, but you lose your reward of the hereafter. So what happens to him? Then, if the if the uh, deeds are lost, if the good deeds are lost, then there's no reward. Then, what? He is left with only the uh, his sins that he has made in his life. So what happens? So these three types of people, they will be thrown in hellfire. So people 
blind people do not recognize ostentation. And ostentation blinds people to the true purpose of existence. Why? How? It diverts their attention from the path of righteousness. When people become consumed by this blameworthy characteristic, they lose their sight of their mistakes. They lose their sight of their weaknesses. And this hinders their ability to learn and to improve or to seek guidance. Because they don't know. They don't know the reality of why they are doing it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fala This is in Surah Al-Najm, Ayah 32. Huwa ittaqa. Do not claim yourselves to be pure. Allah, He is most knowing of who, who fears Him. Allah knows because Allah knows the intentions and he will reward or punish according to the intentions. So how, how is riyah, how is ostentation done? If riyah is done by many ways, many ways. So let's have examples. Uh, if someone is making apparent weakness and tiredness so that people will, will realize, people will know that this person is fasting or that this person had stayed awake in worshiping during the night. He did Qiyam layl and he is showing people that, oh, I'm tired. I did Qiyam late for so many hours. So his intention is not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His intention is that for people to say, oh, he is a good worshiper. He's a good slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another example. Someone pretending grief so that others think that he is very concerned about the matters of the ummah, the matters of the deen. He would feel, he would, he would show grief. Oh, this is happening for so-and-so. This is happening for this ummah. This is happening as if he is, he, 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 he is concerned about everything. So that people would say, oh, look at this person. Another example. Someone uh, staying in an untidy state. With the intention that people will think that he is so engrossed in Dean that he has no time to care for himself. He is, he, he is so deeply engaged in deed. He doesn't have time for himself to take about himself. So he lost his reward. Some physical... Uh, uh, things that, uh, such as lowering uh, someone's voice uh, with the intention that people will understand that he has become weak due to intense striving in worship. So again, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with not, not in a sincere way and just he has something else in mind. So it's not for the sake, purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another example. When someone performs salah in solitude, then he performs it with great haste. So quickly. Allah Akbar. 
up and down, up and down, up and down, and then assalamu alaikum. But if he becomes aware that he is being watched, then he immediately begins to perform his salah with great tranquility, with dignity, in a slow manner. So that the one who is looking at him is made to believe that there is there is great concentration and sincerity in this in this uh, uh, person uh, performing uh, his salah. This, this is a clear sign of show and ostentation. Such people. Uh, are deceived by their uh, intentions. They're doing it. They're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but their intention is not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people might be wearing rough clothing so that uh, People will think that one is really engaged. People uh, is absorbed that he finds no time for himself to 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 uh, go buy nice clothing, go do this, go do go take care of his clothing. That's it. He has intention. He's doing that so that people would say, "Oh, how." Oh, how good is this person putting on patched clothing and performing salah on a special mat so that some some someone is thought of being a great Sufi. Whereas he is completely ignorant of the reality of Tasawwuf, of Sufism. Another example, some people might claim to have memorized many hadith, met many shiur, and uh, if there is any question asked, they would hasten to, to pass rulings on certain, certain matters and on certain hadith, if these hadith are weak, if they are strong, so that they, they, their intention is that they are regarded as well-grounded in knowledge. This is a type of Riyadh. Yeah. This is a type of Riyadh. Yeah. So, these people, actually, they forgot that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يقبل الله عملا فيه مقدار ذرة من الرياح. So this is the warning of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept any action in which there is an atom's weight of show, of ostentation. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was once with Sayyidina Ali radiallahu alayhi wa and he, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Ali, لا فقر أشد من الجهل. There is no poverty worse than ignorance. ولا مال أعوز من العقل. And there is no money more lacking than reason. وَلَا حَسَبَ كَحْسْنِ الْخُلُقِ And it is not counted as good character. So nothing is better than حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ وَلَا إِيمَانَ كَالْيَقِينِ There is no faith like certainty. ولا عبادة كالتفكر There is no worship like contemplation. Then he said, 
Kafatul Hadith al Kazib. The disease of talking is lying. Because not, not every, everything a person says is uh, truthful. Especially if that person has this type of disease in his heart, lying. The, the disease of knowledge, the disease of knowledge, forgetfulness. Sometimes you learn, you learn and you memorize this, you memorize that. When you need it, then you forget it for a second. And the last one is our focus of today's session. The disease of worship is ostentation. If, if someone is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without sincerity, and this is considered as one of the worst bad diseases of the heart, then what is called this is called ostentation. For this reason, Sayyidina Umar uh, said once to a man who was walking, lowering his head, said, Oh, possessor of the neck. You are a person who has a neck. Raise your neck. Humility is not in lowering the neck, but it is in the heart. Humbleness is in the heart. It's not if you lower your head, if you lower your your body when you are uh, when you are praying. No, this is not the way to 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 show that you have uh, you, you are sincere to Allah. No, and this is what uh, Sayyidina Omar said to this person. So he said to him. He, uh, humbleness is not in lowering the, the neck, but it's in the heart. So you don't you don't need people to know that you are fasting. You don't you don't want people to say, "Oh, look at this pious person. Look how he is con how he is focusing on his prayer. Look at how generous this person is." No. Now, if we ask why why riya is prohibited, why ostentation is prohibited, because as we said, it's first of all the opposite of sincerity, and when someone is not sincere with himself, he's not sincere with others, he's not sincere with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So. He is deceiving others so that they can re regard him to be sincere, to be an obedient servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all know that deception is completely prohibited. So if a person desires to create the thought in the heart of people that he is pious, that he is worthy of honor, and in, in this matter, he captures the hearts of people, then who is he deceiving? Who is he deceiving? First of all, he's deceiving himself. He's deceiving people. He forgot that Allah is overwatching. He knows that this quality which he is seeking is not in him. Man is man knows exactly what's in his heart. So he should not be deceiving people. Actually. With 
another reason for uh, Riyadh to be prohibited, for oscillation to be prohibited, is that in itself, Riyadh is a, 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 is, is actually a mercury of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, take an example. If someone is uh, invited to meet the king, so he goes there with his best clothing, with his best perfume, with his best appearance, and he uh, he shows a lot of respect to the king, and uh, he beautifies his actions in front of the king. He beautifies his words in front of the king. But the king knows and feels that this person is not sincere. When someone exaggerates the way he says words, or the way he he speaks, or the way, so the people around him will know that. So for this reason, Riya is referred to as a shirk al the minor shirk. He's not he's not sincere in his actions. And this sin actually will increase in accordance to, in, to incorrect intention. Some people only desire status and position in the eyes of, of, of other people. Others desire that they are regarded as pious, as good people. But indeed, they have made the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as means to sins and to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're deceiving people. They're not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of that, that they that people around them will 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 regard them as as pious. As good people, as good servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as good worshippers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us in the Quran about, about this. But he also uh hoped highly about those people who strive to be away from what their uh, uh, nafs would encourage them to do. Their bad nafs. The bad nafs would, would encourage people for, for this uh, blameworthy characteristic from this disease in the heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Whoever can distance himself from stinginess of his soul, it is those who will be successful. Stay away, keep distant from all the bad diseases from all the bad actions that the bad soul will order you to, 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 to do. So whoever controls his soul from being uh, self, uh, from having this uh, self-deception, let's, let's have it this way. So they will be winners. So a keen person is the one who does not follow his nafs in practicing this type of uh, action that will destroy him in the, in the akhirah, that would destroy all his good deeds. So these people, those people, how, how can they 
get away from the orders of their bad nafs, how, how they can do that? They engage all the time in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are sure of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Kahf in Ayah 7. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ زِينَةً لَهَا لِنَبْلُوَهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Indeed, we have made that which is on the earth adornment so that they, they, the, those people will be tested in their deeds. So everything in this dunya is beautified um, so that a person will be deviated or a person will be sincere. So Allah is testing people. Allah is testing who will become charmed with this dunya, who will, who will obey his nafs, who will destroy his life uh, of, the, of the hereafter. And he's, he's also testing us to see who will regard this dunya as provision, as means that he can use to beautify his life of the akhirah, the afterlife. Some people were, were deceived by, by, by the, the bright lights, the bright misleading lights of this dunya that attract those people who have poor relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they, they do not have, uh, they, they, they do not remember that this life will come to an end one day. So it's a test. Let's not fall into the traps of shaitan. It's his promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will keep whispering to people to, to do bad deeds until they, they will be thrown with him, with him in hellfire. Now, if we say, is there any good sign, any good way of ostentation? You can say, yeah, there are some places that ostentation is acceptable and is recommended, actually. So when? It's sh especially showing the enemy how powerful the Muslims are. Remember that in when when the Muslims came to to perform Umrah, uh, Quraysh leaders were sitting aside, and what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told his Sahaba, told his companions, that when we will pass by them, you show all your strength you run you show how how good how powerful you are so you are not weak and you can rest uh uh when you are away from them so showing the enemy how powerful the muslims are and this can happen also uh, in battlefields show off yes it's not without sincerity this is a key word showing off sincerely with the intention that ya allah i'm doing this so that the enemy will feel our power and this is for your sake and only for your sake so of course the intention uh, is is our focus, our main concern. Uh, also, uh, showing uh, people that the sincerity actually of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of giving sadaqah, of building a mosque, of 
paying uh, paying uh, and helping the needy of of doing these good things all so that the intention is to encourage people to do similar good things or to encourage people to compete in such good things so these are actually acceptable in Islam. Now, if we ask ourselves, if we stop for a second, and if a person feels that his heart has a speck of ostentation, what should he do? He should hasten to cure himself from this evil quality, from this bad heart disease. And if an effort is not made right away, there remains no hope for it in the future, so it will be cured by itself. So, We have to remember that one day our life is coming to an end, will come to an end. And we are all travelers to the hereafter. So this this dunya is, is not a place, an everlasting place. It's a vanishing place. So we have to get ourselves prepared to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All our deeds will be presented before him. And we all have to remember death. We will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when someone thinks of death often, then death will straighten him and it will keep him away from, from practicing these blameworthy characteristics, from having these diseases into the heart. Because we're, no, matter, no matter how long we live, our life will end one day. So we have to prepare ourselves for this long journey. And we have to do as many good deeds as, as we can with the intention of sincerity, with the intention that these actions are, are pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So... We want to have a sound heart. And this is our focus. We want to have a sound heart, which, which must be free from any blameworthy characteristics. No vanity, no self-admiration, no pride, no ostentation, no outiness, no anger, no envy, nothing of these characteristics uh, uh, is none of these characteristics is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to eliminate them from our hearts. And we have to make a lot of dua so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cure us from any of these diseases if they are found in our heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the person who calls him. And he says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Du'uni astajib lakum, make dua, and I will answer your dua. But we have to make dua. What's the best time of making dua? The uh, few moments before Adhan al-Fajr, before going uh, to Fajr prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be in the lowest, the lowest sky and he will ask, 
Is there someone who is repenting so that I will accept his repentance? Is there someone who is asking me for forgiveness and I will forgive him? Is there someone who is asking for anything and I will grant his, his wish? Is there an I will? Is there an I will? And you feel that the moments before Fajr is, you feel that you are the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this time. No distraction. You and Allah are alone. Talk to him. Tell him what you want. Ask him to purify your heart. Ask him to help you. And attend, attend dhikr gatherings always, all the time. Such gatherings soften the heart. So if there is any disease in the heart, it will be softens when when you sit in a, in a gathering that of people that they, they who, who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so learn from sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was the most sincere person learn how to be like him if you love someone you like to imitate him with everything He's our teacher. He's our beloved. Learn all the good manners that he has. So actually, this sickness, ostentation, is very harmful for one's sincerity. It destroys the biggest and the best deeds of a person. So it makes the worship useless. It destroys all acts of worship, the word, because sincerity is the most basic condition of worship. And the foundation of every deed is intention. And intention should be based on sincerity. So if there is no sincerity in an action, then it's a worthless, it's a worthless worship. So hopefully, inshallah, this session serves as a reminder to all of us to correct our intentions. As the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, intentions are better than actions. So let's work on our intentions. Uh, let's focus on our niyas for all of our actions so that they all our actions are pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so that None, we, we, we are not doing anything so that people would say, look at this, look at that. Look at this person, he is so generous. Look at this person, how biased he is. Look at this person, how knowledgeable he is. Look, 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 no. We want all our deeds to be for the sake of Allah, pure for the sake of Allah. No riya, no ostentation. So everything, revolves around the heart and in the heart how pure how sound this heart is this is our focus as we started we end the heart focusing on how pure it is focusing on clearing it of pure on purifying it from all diseases so that we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is pleased with us. Until we meet next week, inshallah, I send my salam and your special salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.